Welcome to Spit Bucket. Today we're here with a very special guest, Michael Hill Smith. Ken, how are you? Very well, thank you, Michael. Welcome to Spit Bucket. From Shore and Smith, but over the years you've had many roles in the industry. That's true, yeah. I suppose, um, yeah, I've been involved in wine judging for years and um, you know, written the odd word about wine and done wine education, but uh, certainly the last 21 years have been focused very much on Shore and Smith, which has been Terrific fun, I have to say. Well, I was thinking this morning it suddenly occurred to me, it's almost 26 years to the day that I met you. Right. Here in Brisbane, at a particularly uh, uh, momentous event, the chem tasting. <laughs> That's right. 50 vintages of Shadow Chem back to 1899. Yeah, that was great. Well, you can you remember how much it cost? Yeah, I do, 500 bucks, because yeah. I was an article clerk, and as an article clerk, that was 10 weeks wages. Yeah, well, someone explained to me that, you know, $500 in those days was still just a scratch on the side of your car, so it must have been the cheapest oh. a chem tasting. It was extraordinary. Unless, of course, you're an article clerk. Yeah, well, I don't think you, you're upset that you spent the oh, money. God, no. <laughs> I had two years warning. <laughs> yeah, no, anyway, uh, we dig digress, but that was, uh, it was a hell of a tasting, and, um, and I think that's part of the thing about, you know, when I did my Master of Wine, part of the, the thing is that by having a sort of international approach to wine, I think in a way uh, has affected the way, you know, we make wine here. Because uh, you're the first Australian Master of Wine? Yeah, I was, I was. And, and I think that, uh, you know, leaving Australia and tasting wines in a more general sense, uh, you know, inspired me and, and also Martin, my business partner, uh, also to try and make, you know, modern Australian wines rather than perhaps what had happened before. Because in those days you had to leave, you, you couldn't do it here in Australia, you had to go to London, didn't you? You did, yeah, yeah, we packed up and lived in squalor in London. But it was fun. <laughs> it was, we drank well and that's sort of important, isn't it? <laughs> The two wines you've got for us. Now, of course, I mean, your Sauvignon Blanc would be Australia's leading Sauvignon Blanc. It's, it's sort of been there for years and it's the one everyone thinks of. But we've got yeah. Chardonnay and Shiraz. Yeah, well, I think these are, um, you know, uh, these are two wines which I think the Adelaide Hills does really well. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we've made Chardonnay since our first vintage in uh, 1990. Mm -hmm. But uh, M3, which is uh, Michael. Matthew and Martin, uh, the three of us that are involved in the company. But Matthew's had a long association with Queensland. Yeah, no, he's, well, he's really a Brisbane boy these days. I mean, you know, he even follows you know, rugby league and union. I, I so didn't mention the football. Either. Terrible, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so you can, you can teach them something if they come up here. <laughs> it's a great sadness to us. But um, no, but the Chardonnay, I think, um, you know, I like to think that uh, M3 in a way uh, shows what's happening uh, in Chardonnay across the board in Australia. That, you know, the wines are being grown, or well, the grapes are being grown in cooler areas. We're getting wines that are finer, uh, wines that uh, rely more on their natural acidity, uh, wines that are inspired by good white burgundy, but still have, you know, an Australian flavour and an, an Australian uh, personality. And, uh, you know, th this wine, which is the 09, which has uh, just been released, um, you know, I think just, just shows that, you know, acid line, lovely flavours, which are almost in a uh, white nectarin yeah, very much kind of, of stone fruit, um, a little bit of floral character. And you know, and a long way from, you know, the big, hefty, oaky, uh, alcoholic Chardonnays of the mm. past. So, you know, I think modern Chardonnay in Australia is, is seriously exciting these days. You've got all these people who, that ABC thing, anything but Chardonnay, and all these people who just signed off it, and as yet haven't come back, and they have no idea what they're missing. The point. Not just this one, there's plenty of other wonderful yeah. examples. No, there is, and it was interesting. Um, Andrew Jefford, um, the English wine writer who uh, writes for Decanter, mm -hmm. who was... Um, full of praise for elements of the Australian wine industry. Well, and, you just spent a year here. Yeah, and full of criticism for other, for other parts. So, yep. um, and it, when he went back, uh, his view was that uh, modern Australian Chardonnay is in fact uh, one of the most exciting parts of the Australian industry. Mm. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm a, a big fan of what's happening in Australia and with Chardonnay and, and M3, you know, I think that each year it sort of gets better. Um, you know, we've changed our approach these days. It's uh, you know, it's all you know, 100% hand harvested. It's wild ferment. It's you know, stirred in the in the barrel. It's you know, quite Burgundian in its technique, but it's just you know, it's, it's just still got very elegant. And refined yeah, and just yeah. I, 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 I've made myself promise, you know, not to call wines elegant anymore oh, really? because you know, that's so, it's, it's such a widely used term. But you know what? They are elegant. Yeah. <laughs> they really are. Absolutely. Yeah. And then now. You saw you would never do 
Shiraz and the Adelaide Hills at some stage you were telling us yesterday. Yeah, well, you know, in the words of Winston Churchill, you know, I was pleased to know that, you know, if you'd made a mistake, you know, you were happy to admit that you'd made a mistake. Uh, and in our case, we just thought that uh, it would be too cold for Shiraz. But we made our first in 2002, and um, you know the fact is that the Shirazes, uh, particularly with this move to interesting, cooler grown Shiraz, we are getting this this wonderful primary spice and this lovely plush texture on the palate, mm -hmm. and it's a long way from you know traditional Australian Shiraz. But uh, you know we are excited by this, and particularly this wine, uh, the 90, so the 2009 has done um, you know really well. Mm -hmm. Now just to interrupt, uh, recommended retails or thereabouts? Well thereabouts, um, you know, 38, 40, you know, round about that. For both of them? Yeah. Okay. And thanks again to Emporium for allowing us to, to film here um, and no doubt you'll be able to find these at Emporium uh, any That's second. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Best wine shop in Brisbane? Absolutely. <laughs> no, the... Uh, Unless we're filming somewhere else. <laughs> Right. If for nothing, we're expedient. Um, no, 09, um, we've just got very good news about that. Um, mm. Wine Wise magazine, yep. which is uh, uh, not widely read, but highly respected, yep. uh, do a tasting of their top uh, gold medal winners from around the country, uh, which is their so-called championship award. Mm. And uh, this, just three weeks ago, uh, this wine was uh, selected as the best Shiraz in mm -hmm. Australia. And then it went on and won the championship award for the best dry red. So that's you know really exciting for us. Um, you know, it's an absolutely beautiful wine. It, when we, we tasted this yesterday, and the first thing I wrote down was supple. And then when you spoke about it, it was pretty much the first thing you said as well. And it really is just that wonderful texture and suppleness, and um, almost seamless, uh, and just lingers along. It's got lovely, lovely purity of, of, of spiciness, and because the oak is, um, you know, is, is subtle, mm. um, you know, I think that it really shows its Adelaide Hills origins. So, um, I, I'm really excited by uh, by Australian cooler climate Shiraz, and um, you know, there are some terrific examples. The world's still really to discover those wines, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, 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 as you know, I travel a lot. And um, you know, in some parts of the world, people are kind of really up with what's happening in Australia. In other parts, they still have a view that all Australian reds are 15% alcohol and big and oaky. And then you show them a wine like this, and uh, I think they are really surprised, absolutely surprised at uh, how fine it is, how spicy it is, and more importantly, how balanced it is. Michael, thank you so much for coming on uh, Spitfire. Cheers. Do you reckon we'll ever taste 50 vintages of Shadow Cam again? I'm hoping to taste one in about three hours with a bit of luck, but uh, right. <laughs> All right, then. I'm off to lunch with some yeah. of the same guys. Right, 49 to go. <laughs> yeah, Cheers. No, I don't think so. Remember, we spit so you don't have to.